Hello. Today we are going to talk about researching and writing your thesis. I am Professor Rachel Tan of the University of the Philippines Journalism Department. The thesis is unfortunately the stumbling block of most degree-seeking students. But it is a requirement of most universities, especially the University of the Philippines, which is characterized as a research university. This series of online lectures will hopefully help you navigate through the thesis writing process. It should not be overwhelming. If you take it at one step at a time, and also if you really plan for it as early as possible during your graduate school journey, you will see that it is not as tedious or difficult as it seems. Coined by Aristotle, the term thesis comes from the Greek word thesis, meaning something put forth. We can also look at it from the root of research, re for repeat and search to look for, as in repeatedly looking for the answers to a particular problem. Mason and Bramble had defined it as a systematic, organized search for knowledge or answers to questions. Schumacher defines it as a systematic process of collecting and logically analyzing information for a specific purpose. Emory defines it as a systematic inquiry aimed at providing information to solve problems. And Bigger and Gale say that it is a it is concerned with understanding a phenomenon within the context of our theories and experiences regarding that phenomenon. As we can see from the chart, there are several criteria that is expected depending on one's degree program. To demonstrate students' ability to conduct independent research, to demonstrate an understanding of theories of the field, the ability to call pertinent research literature is expected of all degree programs. The originality of the research is varying depending on the levels. For the undergraduate, what is expected is originality in terms of the focus or phenomenon being studied, but they can borrow from existing theoretical frameworks and or methodologies. At the master level, one is, is expected to advance theoretical knowledge and um, the development of uh, theoretical framework, as well as the originality of the research phenomenon. At the PhD level, one is expected not only to advance theoretical framework, but also to help build theoretical um, knowledge. So the construction of theory is something that is also encouraged in the PhD level. The scope, of course, um, becomes more in-depth as one progresses in the academic track. At whatever level, one is expected to add knowledge in the field, whether it is just the issue being studied in terms of the undergraduate or a contribution to the understanding of phenomenon in the master level or the foundations of new research or new understanding of a phenomenon in terms of the PhD program. We already discussed what is expected in terms of theoretical development. In terms of methodology, the undergraduate can have only one single method, quantitative or qualitative, while a mixed methods approach is expected for the masteral students. In terms of the PhD, they can have a mixed methods approach or they can have a grounded theory method, methodology in terms of uh, the theory building. Of course, depth of analysis 
um, is expected at a, a wider and deeper scope depending on the level of the degree and the length of the research paper. Of course, this is just a guide, but basically when you, a, when you are doing a master's thesis, you are expected to be able to publish the research in a uh, peer-reviewed journal. In terms of the PhD dissertation, this in fact should translate to two or three academic research papers in various um, peer-reviewed journals. Mass media research evolved in definable steps and similar patterns have been followed in each medium's need for research. While I am talking here of the development of mass media research historically, today we do not need to follow these phases but simply look at what we want to study in terms of the, um, the journalism uh, phenomenon that we wish to do our thesis on. Phase one looks at the medium itself. What is it? How does it work? What technology does it involve? How is it similar or different from what we already have? What are the function services it provides? Who will have access to it? How much will it cost? This study is applicable when there is new media being introduced into the field. For example, the use of TikTok in, in journalist reporting um, is one possible area of study. Phase two is more of an audience reception analysis looks at the uses and users of the medium. How do people use the medium? Who uses it? Why? What gratification does the new medium provide? What types of information or entertainment does the new medium replace? Were the original projections about the use of the medium correct? What uses are evident other than the projected ones? The third type or the third phase of research development looked at the effects of the medium. This investigates the socioeconomic, psychological, and physical effects of the medium. How much time do people spend with the med medium? Does it change people's perspectives about anything? What do users of the medium gain from it? Are there any harmful effects? How does it help people? In what way? So basically, it looks at the effects of the medium on the um, journalist's audience. It can also look at the effects of the medium on the journalists themselves. The last phase looks at the future of journalism. It determines how the medium can be improved, either in its use or through technological developments. Is there a way to change content or programming to be more valuable or entertaining? How does technology and its developments change the people's use of the medium? These and many other ways are um, what we look at in the fourth phase. Um, especially in projecting the future of journalism. There are many areas of journalism research. I have but named a few that we will look through to give you some ideas to start on. One is journalism history, which deals with local histo history of the field. This is an area that is very much um, needed we do not have written history as much as we want in terms of um, Philippine press history. And therefore, if you have access to a particular period or a particular um, historical figure, it is a very much welcome research. Then you have journalism education, how journalism is taught, news organizations. You can look at the operations, routines, ownership. 
news values, content, and framing, looks at the perspectives, ideologies, and agenda setting, um, role of media. Although I would caution the masteral students um, regarding this because this is quite common in the undergraduate program. Journalists as gatekeepers looks at the roles of the editors, especially in terms of news selection. Um, it could look at whether there's a difference between print and broadcast, online, etc. Of course, the field of professionalism and stewardship is also an area that needs to be further um, developed in terms of research, in terms of truth-telling, corruption, the watchdog role of journalists, uh, etc. Reporters and their sources, their relationships, their divergence, the relationship of public relations and journalism, um, as well as the um, selection of sources. And then, of course, you have gender issues. You have the commercialization of news, the obsession, for example, for ratings, uh, circulation and marketing, um, perhaps also product placement within the news, the um, news editorializing, etc. ICT and convergence, technology, data journalism, social media, cross platforms, and of course, fact checking. Then you have journalism and the law especially um, in the areas of libel and cyber libel, the Freedom of Information Act, etc. Journalism and democracy, especially in the area of press freedom. Of course, we also need more studies on alternative and citizen journalism, war and peace journalism, especially in the uh, hot spots or conflict areas of the Philippines. And last but not least, development journalism. So these are just um, guides. Of course, you may think of topics that are totally out of this list um, because journalism is a broad area of study. Quoting Albert Einstein, if we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? 